Today, I'm going to show you how to create those beautiful sweeping panoramic images inside of Lightroom or Photoshop. Hey, Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com. And today I've got a fun tutorial for you. I'm going to show you guys how to create those beautiful sweeping panoramas. Now, this is something I'm really into, and I've been doing a lot of these over the years. If you've been following me on Instagram or Twitter, or Facebook, you've probably seen a lot of my images. And some of them I've even gone as extreme as having 120 or 130 images inside of a very large HDR panorama. And they look absolutely gorgeous printed, but also they look nice, you know, if you want to use them on your website or different places like that. So right now we're going to look at the process of doing it. I'm going to spend about a minute here and talk a little bit about camera settings or how you would do it on your camera. And then we're going to jump into Lightroom and put together a aerial panorama that I shot in Denver, Colorado. So for my demo camera, I'm going to use something, a Fuji. That's a camera you don't see so often. I'm curious, what brand do you guys use? Usually I use a Canon or Sony, but I also have a lot of fun with this X-T10. They're fun little cameras. So anyway, when you go to shoot a panorama, the first thing that most people do and the first mistake is they get the camera like this. And you know, it, it stands to reason you want to shoot wide. So you're going to start off with the camera as wide as you possibly can, but you don't want to do that. What you want to do is flip your camera over and shoot vertical. Now, the reason for that is if there's detail in the ground and there's detail in the sky, you're going to get a much bigger strip. So you're going to cover more area in your shot. But also what you're going to do is you're going to get more resolution because shooting this way is gonna obviously give you more resolution than shooting this way. You might get three shots this way, you might get five this way. Kind of makes sense. All right, so what you wanna do now is you wanna look into your photograph and find the brightest point of the photograph and set your exposure and make sure that you're not blowing out the highlights on that part. The reason for this is it's very easy to recover shadows, but you can't recover so much in the highlight areas on a digital photograph. Then you're gonna lock down your exposure and you're gonna shoot your shots. Now, if there's a lot of dynamic range in the scene, you know, say for example, it's a sunrise and you want to actually capture that ball of sun with the light rays, then I would recommend you move into bracketing and shoot an HDR panorama. But we're not going to cover that in this tutorial. We're just going to cover the basic panorama. But the principle would be the same. Just bracket your shots instead of shooting individual ones. All right. So what you want to do now is you want to make sure you've got about a 20% overlap. 20 to 30% is usually pretty good as far as the overlap in between the shots. And that way, you're going to make sure you get a nice clean stitch. You probably on a camera like this, you don't want any more than that because you're just going to be taking unnecessary shots. But you don't want to do any less than that either because you want to make sure you've got a good stitch. Now, if you're using a drone, I would recommend a higher amount. In fact, I usually do at least a 50% overlap with the drone. And the reason for that is because if it's a very wide angle lens and when you're rotating, you want to make sure you reduce the amount of distortion you're possibly getting. Now, another thing to bear in mind, if you have objects in the foreground or very close to this camera, you're going to be dealing with parallax. What is parallax? Well, put your finger out in front of your face right now and close one eye and see where it lines up on the background. Now change the eye and notice it shifts quite a lot. Now, if your subject's far away from you, parallax is not going to be an issue. If the object is very close to you or there's foreground elements, when you get that parallax, you're either going to get doubling, which means you're going to get those things appearing more than once, or things are going to disappear out of the photograph altogether. The key to that is to rotate the camera. Rather than just rotating the camera like this or rotating like this, what you want to do is rotate the camera on the nodal point. What do I mean by the nodal point? This is the point of no parallax on the camera. And you can find it by simply looking and rotating your camera. Maybe I want to turn my camera from here. See the side of the lens? Test that and then bring it forward. Rotate from there. Rotate from here and look through your viewfinder and line up those areas. When you don't see movement, that means you're rotating the camera on that nodal point and you're not going to get doubling or missing things in the foreground. You can buy tripod heads shot for panorama, such as the Nodal Ninja, or I have the Manfrotto, where you can actually align it. So you set up your camera this way, you set it up this way, and you set it up this way so you can reduce that. But my little trick here is if I just use my finger, I can figure out exactly where, or in this case, shooting that way, I can figure out where 
I want to rotate that camera. So it's just a little kind of a hack for you guys. And then once you've done that, capture photos and shoot them in RAW because RAW is going to give you more dynamic range and better quality photos. Then when you've done that, we're going to go into Lightroom and let's pick up right here. Now, it doesn't matter if you're using Lightroom and it doesn't matter if you're using Mac or PC, it's identical. And also, it doesn't matter if you're using Photoshop. If you're using Photoshop, go into Camera Raw. It has to be, of course, Photoshop CC or newer. And you are going to have the same settings available that you have here. They're exactly the same. In fact, they just might be in different places. So we'll, we'll touch on that where they differ. All right. So now we've got photographs here. Here's a number of photos. How many do I have? I have 11 shots here that I shot in Denver. And you can see with my drone, I was kind of flying around here looking for different things. Now you might notice something interesting here. Notice this is a higher altitude. And then we've got a lower altitude. What's going on here? Well, what I did is I shot this multi-row. Let me increase this so, you can, so I can show you. So essentially what I did is because it's just going to be too thin and I want more detail in the ground and I want more detail above. And by the way, I was across the street. I wasn't anywhere near the stadium when I was shooting it in case someone's going to ask about that. No, I was flying perfectly legal. So what I did is I shot the panorama in one row up here and then I tilted the camera down and I shot another row pointing down. And then that way I can get more sky and more foreground because usually you can't rotate the camera if you have the original mavic one you can but that's the only drone i know of that has a rotating camera or a rotating um, sensor so otherwise you have to shoot the different rows on a camera tilting the camera sideways will alleviate this okay so now that we have all of these photos what we're going to do is i'm just going to select them all and this is really easy all we need to do now is just choose right click we're going to choose photo merge panorama now, if you did an HDR panorama, you would use that option. Now, if you're using Photoshop and you're using Camera Raw, instead of going here, you're just going to go up to the top menu above the film strip and click on there and you'll see the option Merge to Panorama. Exactly the same settings. So we're going to click and now Lightroom is going to do its work. Now, these are original raw files. I'm not working on JPEGs, so it might take a moment here. So we're just going to be patient and wait for this to happen there we go and right now we're seeing a perfect panorama now there's more detail on these edges let's have a look at that we're going to turn off auto crop right now and if we turn off auto crop you can see there's more information here that's kind of in this hemispherical kind of uh pattern now if we do crop this what it does is just simply cropping this image down and filling in that area now, if you choose auto crop and you're happy and you feel like I don't need any more foreground elements or I don't need any more of the sky, see how that bus is cut in half. If we turn auto crop off, we've got railway tracks. What if we want to include these railway tracks? Well, there's two options. The first one is boundary warp. If we take the boundary warp, we can drag this out and this stretches out the photograph. So what it's doing is Imagine you're working with silly putty or gum and you've printed something on it and then you stretch it. That's what we're doing here. We're stretching it and we're not throwing away any pixels. We're just basically stretching it to fit the frame. And if we look at this, all the details here, but we're going to see some weird artifacts here and see how the earth starts to curve. Now, sometimes it doesn't do that, but sometimes it does. So in this situation, the boundary warp is good, but it's not quite getting us there. So let's pull it back a little bit. See how far we can take it. We can take it to about there without causing too many problems. A little curvature, but nothing too painful. So there's another option that was actually dropped into Lightroom Classic 2020. And that's fill edges. So essentially, if I click on that fill edges, what it's going to do is going to use content aware fill to fill up these edges. Now, it's not going to be perfect, but it's definitely going to be a good starting place. Let's have a look. Turn on fill edges and let's see how well it does. Notice what I did is I set the boundary warp as far as I could first to make it a little bit easier, but that's not essential. You could do fill edges without boundary warp. Okay, if we look at it now, how is it looking? It's pretty good. Like, there's a little work we need here. This corner looks great. Up here, I see a doubling of that building. If we clone out that, we'll, we'll be okay. On the other side, we get a doubling of that. So we could either just crop this in a little bit 
And in fact, some of the times that's what I'll do is I'll use this option and then I'll just crop off the edges because I don't need those edges, so it doesn't matter. All I want is that top and bottom. And we can see here we've got a lot more there. And we can fix this or we can just kind of crop it down a little bit if we want as well. So let me just choose Merge. And what it's going to do now is it's going to build a brand new file. It's building a DNG file where it's putting all of these photographs together into this one. And we double click on it and here it is. Okay, so at this point, you know, you can make your basic image adjustments. You know, you could go into your develop module here. You know, you could set your white point. Let's look for an area of neutral gray. Maybe somewhere over here. And we can start to remove that color cast. I kind of want to warm it up just a little bit. I like that. Now we can recover our highlights a little bit. Recover our shadows a little bit. I'm going to take our contrast down a little bit because... Lightroom tends to add a bit of contrast. And we're looking at that. That's starting to look quite nice. Of course, we could do other things. We give a little punch of texture there. And we could give a little touch of vibrance. And you can see, you know, there's some areas here that need to be fixed up on these corners there. The other thing I did mention, we could crop this. So if we wanted to go here, one of the things I might do is just kind of crop that in a little bit. And then we can just get rid of all these areas there and we don't have to worry about the issues. Just hit enter. Okay, so then we could go into Photoshop. We could do a little bit of cloning and healing and I've got plenty of tutorials on that here on this channel. So what do you guys think about this working here in Lightroom Camera Raw? I think it's a pretty fast and easy way of working with panoramas. Let me know in the comments underneath if you learned anything new. And by the way, if you're new here and this is your first time on Photoshop Cafe, first of all, welcome. And yeah, consider hitting that subscribe button, become part of the cafe crew and, and ring that notification bell so you know when I upload a new tutorial, which is every single week. Anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.